Third, is that what yeah. it is? Yep. Oh, okay, good. Well, that's something to look forward to. Mary, doing okay? You sore over there? You all right? I'm sore, dude. You doing okay? I'm talking about. You all right? I'm just checking in. Um, yes. Oh, I didn't mean that kind of sore. She's, Ooh, she's sore okay. like in the 1920s. What do you say? Hey, why so sore? Don't get sore with me, Pally. <laughs> you know, because of this uh, continuing strike there with SAG-AFTRA, all of the finished movies are getting pushed back because they want people to be able to go out and do press for them. And so they can't. You know, I have a couple of guests on the show over the next week and a half or so. Um, Margaret Cho is going to join me. I'm going to talk to... Who else am I talking to? Mm -hmm. Um, Craig Ferguson. Oh. And so they make it very clear, hey, I can't talk about my upcoming projects. So, but, but you know, people are still out there, and, and now they got time to kill, and so they're like, oh, we can talk about other things. Okay, yeah. cool. I'm a fan. Let's do that. Uh, but they're pushing all these movies. They were getting ready to drop the second half of the Dune movie in October. They'd already pushed it back a couple of weeks. I'm sorry, November. I think it was going to be out beginning of November, then they pushed it to after Thanksgiving. Now they're pushing it to next year. They're pushing back uh, Aquaman 2. I never, I, I never saw Aquaman 1 with Jason Momoa, but I didn't realize that I was reading that Aquaman 1 is the highest grossing film in the DCU. And I was blown away by that. Because when I think of Aquaman, I think of the super friends, right? Blonde guy. Meanwhile, <laughs> the Legion of Doom. Uh, but it's Jason Momoa, of course. And they've pushed uh, the, the back half of Dune to 2024, that color purple reboot with uh, the black Little Mermaid that got everybody all upset. Remember when they did the Little Mermaid, but mm. they made her black? Yeah. And people flipped the F out. Uh, that girl, I think, is playing the Whoopi Goldberg part in uh, the color purple reboot. Who's and, playing blue? I'm sorry? And red and yellow. I've never seen that movie, so I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> I also don't know. Uh -huh. But, um, yeah, so because of these uh, continuing strikes, and nobody's budging, so who knows how long this will continue. I also love that the studios could have just paid these people more, and, they wouldn't have, and they've already lost more money than they would have given up. But they just don't want to give it up. Well, the, the math that is going around is the amount of money that the CEOs of these companies make. And if they had taken a minuscule pay cut, let's say if they had made $180 million instead of $200 million, you know, they could have um, answered all of the union's demands. And those people would still remain very, very rich. So obviously they want these movies to have all of the people in them because you got a bunch of A-listers in that Dune movie. You got Florence Pugh. He was just naked in uh, Oppenheimer. Mm -hmm. Javier Bardem and Josh Brolin and and uh, the kid, um, uh, the kid that played Elvis. He's a new c character in the second Dune. Uh, Austin uh, Butler. Austin Butler. He's all bald and pale. If you've seen that Dune too. Pale. I don't want to see it now. Well, they're not going to have him in the Elvis wig. <laughs> no, <but laughs> I mean, like, you know. Oh, well, they should, they, huh? They they don't like him for his acting ability. They like him because he's hot. Don't make him not look hot. That's the money maker. How do you know they don't like him for his acting? Yeah, but if you have somebody who can act and they're good looking, that's what they want. This isn't England. They're not just throwing people on television. Yes, they, they want are. good looking people who can act. Awesome Butler, of course, played uh, Elvis in that Baz Luhrmann thing with Tom Hanks in that fat suit. And they said that he sang all of his own parts, which I thought was pretty impressive. I paint plots and I cannot lie. You are the brothers I can't deny. There were never songs stolen the from a black guy. Around <laughs> in your face, you get sprung. You get sprung. Oh, well, you get sprung. The deep in the jeans she's wearing. I looked and I can't stop staring. Baby got back. Listen, a lot of people took a great deal of umbrage with the fact that. Um, Elvis was referred to as the king of rock and roll when it was very clearly Little Richard. 
But uh, people still love Elvis. Although I feel like that's waning. I feel like the generation of people who gave a fat frog's ass about Elvis are all dying off. Well, they're just like, that's not like a thing anymore. You know, you you, you can. Because it was, the fandom was real strong in the 80s and 90s. Well, because he had just recently died. Well, the big comeback concert in the late 70s in Hawaii, that was a big deal. I remember my uncle having that on vinyl, this like four album Elvis in Hawaii or Honolulu, whatever the big comeback thing was. The way everybody remembers him at the end, right? In the big sequined jumpsuit and that, you know. And he was bloated. Like he wasn't hot towards the end. Well, he was fat. Yeah, he was a, he was a fat big Elvis, dude. Yeah. yeah, fat Elvis. Um, but he was medicating himself, Pound Cake. He was, uh, he was a man of many, many. He couldn't afford a personal trainer? Well, you you can world. afford it, but if you don't do the problems stuff, yeah. getting into physical shape, the yeah. guy was eating bacon and and peanut, peanut butter, butter sandwiches. sandwiches. I mean, which is good. <laughs> I've never had <laughs> but that. But you got to calm down. You can't do it for every meal. Was he? Is that what he was food? doing every meal? I have no idea. If I'd known him, I, I would have turned him on to the BLP bill. I don't know much of BLP. The B. What is the B? Oh, God. What's the uh, B? Yeah, the bacon, <laughs> lettuce, and peach. Uh. The best thing about Elvis is his old movies. Clam bake? Just those terrible. They're so bad. They're so bad. But if you ever want to just have a good time laughing at a terrible movie, watch an old Elvis movie. A couple of them he was okay in, but it was the ones they'd have to surround him with actual actors because they'd be like, okay, well, this guy's really good looking, and it's going to be a lot of songs, so let's just have other actors do the dialogue in between, and then we'll have a movie. And then, yeah, have him sing a song or two. Yeah. And he d- jumps into a river. Boom. <laughs> Movie. Yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah, you put Anne Margaret in Clambake or, you know, Harem Scarum, whatever. They they made him like an Egyptian pharaoh or something. But that's what you were going to do. I mean, Elvis was the biggest thing going for a while. The guy made like 20 movies in 10 years. Because mm-hmm. back then they were just cranking them out. Yeah, because most movies back then were, you know, those beach movies. They, yeah, they, they sucked. Yeah, the script was like five pages long. Mm-hmm. They were like, let's just there's have like, Elvis sing songs in between yeah, GI Blues. 18 and, dance scenes. Yeah. <laughs> King Creole. Well, because honestly, those were kind of the precursor to music videos. The Elvis movies. Well, Elvis movies. Beach Blanket like, Bingo. But and like those. beach movies and, and just putting any... Because there wasn't really music videos yet, so and even like the Beatles movies were kind of, you were just get, waiting for the montage where they played a song and then ran around and did silly stuff. Right. Sorry, I'm playing the wrong one here. In the ghetto. Oh, yeah. That was a great song. As the snow flies. On a cold and gray Chicago morning, a poor little baby child is born in the ghetto. Sing it, Mary. I don't know this. You don't know In the Ghetto? No, I'm not very well versed in Elvis. You don't know In the Ghetto? I do not know this. I have never heard this song. You don't need it's another hungry mouth to feed in the ghetto. <laughs> this hand. The child needs a helping hand. Anyway, that's Elvis, and uh, he is dead. I want to do one more in the ghetto. I take a look at you and me. Are we too blind to see? Do we simply turn our He was calling for all of us to lock arms and try to find a solution. And a hungry little boy oh, with a running nose Plays in the street as the cold wind blows in the ghetto Ghetto! The ghetto All right <laughs> Elvis still dead But um, He's yeah. alive in our hearts Indeed Hey, anytime you want to leave a voicemail for us uh, The Alan Cox Show After Hours line is your saving grace It's 216-986-8903 Trucker John, King of I-71, I have to know what Bill ate to fart that loud in the staircase. I have to know what he had to eat. (laughs) It had to be stuffed cabbage, something on that line. 
It's a good chance Anyhow, it was cabbage. Pound cake, congrats on your new apartment. Boy, I lived in some really bad ones. In your 20s, all you just need is a place to lay the head. All right, man. Take care of each other. Trucker John out. Oh, he's going to lay the head all right. Yeah, but also, <laughs> he's, he's in his 30s. He's la- Don't forget yeah, that. Right. Yeah. He's about 10 years past you, but he'll still be laying the head. Uh, That's probably a big ask to try to figure out what you ate yeah, the day of your stairwell 2018. Fart. Right. So that I was pre-pandemic. I have no idea exactly what I was eating, but I think I was eating a very protein- and vegetable heavy diet at the time. This mm-hmm. wasn't your keto days. It wasn't keto. It was uh, I think I think it was in the um, a nutrimost phase. So I think I was eating a lot of cabbage. Mm. So it could have been a big old cabbage fart. Maybe oh. eggs. Yeah, stairway oh, and eggs will give me some. Fu- My egg farts aren't loud, but they reek. Dude, I eat eggs every single day. Yeah, they smell like eggs. My farts are the worst. So. <laughs> Those are bad farts. Yeah, mine are really, really bad. Bad farts. Remember when John Popper was in his keto phase? Mm. <laughs> mm. You know, the outtakes from Runaround mm. off of the uh, Blues Travelers 4 mm. album were, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You might not have heard those before, but they'll never leave you. I love me some Blues Traveler, though. See, eggs don't make me farty. And uh, I'm not sure why. Because they really should. Oh. Rob Anthony's asking, what is the stairway fart? Stairwell fart. Yeah, the stairwell fart uh, over at Squifle Tower. Well, you tell it. Well, uh, I would walk down the steps in the morning on my way to the gym. and Rather I than would, take the elevator. Rather than take the get elevator. Your steps get, in. You know, get, get a few extra steps in. You know, I'd, I'd take them down and up. It wasn't just one way thing. And the acoustics in there were so good that I would always fart in there because early in the morning, you still got some farts in your butt. And I was like, I got to record one of these. So I recorded one, and it sounds like this. (laughs) You know, there's not much to it, but it really gets a lot into a small period of time. And also, to John, a lot of the work is being done by the stairwell there. It's not the loudest fart. The acoustics. It's, it's the acoustics. Mm-hmm. It's like singing in the shower. Right. We're all going to sound like Elvis. In the ghetto. In the ghetto. I was reading about somebody else. I don't know why people do this. Somebody else suing Taco Bell for false advertising. Oh. I'm like, are you familiar with advertising at all, by the way? They're like, it doesn't look like the picture. N- name one thing that looks the same as the picture, by don't the way. Don't they throw these lawsuits out immediately? Yeah, that's why I don't know why people keep filing them. A lot of time and talent. You ever meet a food photographer? It is a fascinating line of work. A lot, a lot of, of time glue. and talent goes into professional food photography because it's very rare that they're actually filming the actual food item. It's being constructed from other things, right? Right. Like, they're using glue instead of milk for cereal and things like that. And so somebody is suing Taco Bell, again, accusing them of false advertising when it comes to their Mexican pizzas and crunch wraps. Some people are never happy. People were complaining for years. Taco Bell, by the way, if you're complaining about Taco Bell, you live in a charmed life. That's as bad as it gets for you. But people were complaining that the Mexican pizzas were gone. And they bring them back. And then people complain that they're now what they thought they were going to be. This guy uh, filed a lawsuit noticing that the Mexican pizza he bought didn't have the same amount of filling as the photos. You ever seen a photo of a hamburger from a fast food joint? Yeah. And then you get it home and you go, nobody opens that and goes, well, this doesn't look like the picture. Nailed it. What are you, five? He said the advertising of the product said that it should contain at least double the beef and bean filling. <laughs> Very much reminds me of uh, God. falling down. Yes. He, he freaks out. Michael Douglas the, in the early 90s. The, the pic, this doesn't look like the picture. That's falling right. Down. You, you had a bad day. <laughs> so you get fired from your job. You don't got to go hurting people. He says that Taco Bell is engaging in unfair and financially damaging practice because inflation, food, and meat prices are very high. In fact, inflation is not high. It's very, very low right now. 
Um, and uh, many consumers are struggling for blah, blah, blah. People will come up with any reason to file frivolous lawsuits. He wants $5 million uh, for uh, people what, who have bought. suffering? What? I don't know. But boy, if you, you want to talk about a lawsuit that gets thrown out quickly, if your uh, whole filing is, hey, this mm-hmm. doesn't look like the picture, but it's kind, of, it's kind of baked into the cake. Like, it does suck. I will say that. It really does suck. I have a bigger problem, but you go, okay, but that's what it is. I have a problem when you get the food and you basically have to reconstruct it yourself. Where you open it up and you're like, oh, none of this is together. It's just all like they took the ingredients. And I'm not singling out Taco Bell. Just any place where they like took the ingredients, threw them in the direction of the wrapper, and then wrapped it all up. And then you get home and you go, oh, I guess I'll put this back together myself. There's a lot of sandwich places that do that. And if they were running like a big, busy line of people, you go, yeah. But when you walk in and there's two people and you get it, you know, out of there and you unwrap it, and you're like, oh, I guess I'll, um, I guess I'll get out my protractor and figure this out. But this guy's suing Taco Bell. Somebody's suing Lizzo. If you read the a story. A lot on of the, people are suing Lizzo. That's a wild a story. The Lizzo lawsuit's really wild. Because the lawsuit is, she fat shamed us. What? You didn't read about the Lizzo lawsuit? I mean. Yeah. Well, and there's like sexual Let's... harassment charges and stuff. Or not charges, I'm sorry, accusations. Saying they, yeah, she, she made, made them touch a naked stripper Touch a stuff. wiener or something at a, yeah, huh. or a bulge at a <laughs> nightclub. Yeah, three of Lizzo's former dancers accused her of sexual harassment and a hostile work environment. But it sounds like the person that she had running her dancers is responsible for this. And again, I have no skin in the Lizzo game, but the the way that it lays out, it sounds like the person that she hired to run to kind of be the drill sergeant for the dancers. Because you got to have someone like that if you're going to have dancers on a pop tour. Because if you can't make it happen, there's a line of people behind you who are willing to fill in and take that gig. And so these girls are like, yeah, I got fired for being gaining weight. You know, like the stories of when they used to get the waitresses in the casinos in Vegas, and they'd bring the calipers out, see if they gained any weight. I don't know if it rises to that level, but um, obviously not a good look for Lizzo because her whole thing is body positivity and celebrating her sizable carriage. And so if dancers were like, yeah, I got fired because I gained some weight or they were yelling at me or whatever. But it sounds like it was the captain of Lizzo's dance team. I don't know. But the sexual harassment stuff. Lizzo tried to get this girl to touch a pee-pee or something. Don't make someone touch a pee-pee. Stop trying to get people to touch pee-pee. So Melissa Jefferson is some some hot water here. And... um. Complaining about Lizzo and her management team. I expected, when I saw sexual assault or, or allegations thereof, I expected it to be more in the American Pie vein. Yeah, it, it starts with a pie? Huh? Yeah. No, the flute. Oh. oh. Lizzo famously plays the flute. and Or blows into it. I, I, I can't tell the difference. I don't know. Wh- I think she's good. Is she? I think so. I don't know how good you have to be to play the flute. I know Ian Anderson from Jethro Tull and Lizzo. That's all I know about the flute in popular music. You're not a flute enthusiast? A flautist? No. No, that's the people who play it. No, that's a flautist. So, um, yeah, I I don't know if, um, I I don't know what this is. But uh, she's got to go to court unless it gets thrown out that they were in an uh, allegation that they were in a strip club and they were all having fun, and one of the dancers was berated by the other girls into uh, touching a bulge or something. They were in a, in a strip club in Amsterdam, and that she ba- began inviting cast members to take turns touching the nude performers and catching dildos launched from the performers' <laughs> nether regions. <laughs> Did you have to bring your own mitt, or how does that work? Hey, get back here, and I'm going to need you to catch this when she shoots it out. Boy, they're wilding in Amsterdam. Who knew? They are. 
So, um, but I mean, if your whole thing is body positivity and whether it's true or not, if the dancers uh, are posting pictures of themselves like, I got fired for being too fat, uh, that ain't a good look. Maybe Lizzo wants to make sure that she's the fattest person up there. Maybe there's a part of it where she's like, look, I'm the star. I need you guys to not, you have to be like, we all have to be similar in size. But I don't know. But it sounds like they had a real drill sergeant running the dance team. And that's a tough business to get into anyway. You know, people who... Especially when you have to deal with fat dancers. Well, I'm just saying, like, people who want to dance professionally in this capacity, that's because you're running around every night. You're doing stuff. You got somebody screaming at you that you're getting the moves wrong. I mean... Uh, Lizzo responded to one girl's complaint by cracking her knuckles, bawling her fists, and telling her that she was lucky to be part of the tour. Lizzo raised both of her middle fingers and yelled a slur at the girl, allegedly. (laughs) You should be, you are lucky. Now, in one sense, she's right. You're really lucky Mm -hmm. if you get on one of these big pop tours. You are very lucky. But you've worked for it, too. They don't just pluck people off the street and want to go, hey, want to dance behind Lizzo while she blows into a flute? Just making more and more people like Taylor Swift because all she's doing is shaking people's hands and handing out big old bonuses. Bonuses to truckers. Truckers and all, oh. like everybody. She gave out 55 million, 55 million bonuses. <laughs> 55 pies, 55 taters, $55 million in bonuses. Mm-hmm. She can't stop giving people money. Mm-hmm. I've got a break here. Uh, You want to join us for the Alan Cox Show cruise? You're in luck because i got a couple of passes for you after the break. Uh, Captain Fun's Floating Fandango. We haven't done the uh, cruise in the Nautica Queen.